Some of my favorite triathlon YouTubers have awesome videos about what they eat in a day, and it's great to get an insight into their lives and the sort of foods that they eat. But when I looked through the comment section on these videos, I saw a lot of negativity about their diets and their food choices. And it got me thinking that I should do a video about professional triathletes diets and whether or not they're healthy. There are videos by triathletes like Lucy Charles Barclay, Gustav Eden, Eric Lagerstrom and Paula Finlay, just to name a few. And in those videos, as well as the everyday healthy food, you see a large amount of refined grains like white bread or pasta, sports drinks like Red Bull or sugar powders like maltodextrin, as well as desserts and sweets. These are all foods which have a reputation as being unhealthy or bad for you, as evidenced by the countless comments about them. So. I wanted to break this down. If you're new here, by the way, my name is James and I'm a sports nutritionist with a focus on triathlon, so love talking about all sorts of things to do with this. But I also work in general practice or family medicine as an advanced clinical practitioner and I have a similar role to your family doctor. So the health side of things is important for me too. So first up, let's just talk about that term healthy. What's a healthy food and what's unhealthy? To be honest, there are relatively few foods which are so clearly one or the other and instead they are somewhere on a sliding scale and where they are on that scale depends on the context in which they're consumed. By that I mean in one scenario certain food might be considered unhealthy and in another scenario that same food might be considered healthy or necessary. And that's something to keep in mind as we go through this video. Now let's talk about the calorie needs of professional triathletes because it kind of sets the scene here. Most of us mortal amateur triathletes who train for triathlon probably need somewhere between two to 4,000 calories per day, but obviously that does depend on training volume or intensity, and it might actually be higher than that. But professional triathletes will commonly need anywhere between about 5,000 to 8,000 calories per day because their training volume and or intensity is higher. Now that's a lot of calories to eat, day in, day out, and it actually requires quite some effort to eat that amount of calories regularly. And that's the first major thing to talk about, and that's how realistic it is to eat that amount of calories from just typical healthy food. So here we're thinking of things like whole grain carbohydrates, lots of vegetables, healthy fats and protein sources. It's actually extremely difficult. When you have a classic healthy plate full of these things, they're generally high in fiber, fat and protein, all of which take longer and are generally a bit harder to digest. And it's these sorts of foods which lead to the sensation of feeling full and larger amounts of them can contribute to bloating and gas. And generally, these foods are less calorie dense, bar fatty foods, which means the overall amount of calories in them for that same volume of food is a lot lower. If you try to eat 8,000 calories a day or even 5,000 calories a day of just these typical healthy foods, I can guarantee you that you would not be particularly comfortable by the end of the day and you'd probably be farting like an absolute monster. So trying to exercise on top of eating such a vast quantity of this food is realistically a no-go. These are also the typical foods which contribute to tummy upset during exercise, which is why you'll usually find nutrition advice will suggest low fiber, fat and protein foods around hard training or racing. In order to be able to train properly and as much as some of these pros do, it's simply not possible to only eat typically healthy foods for calories. But the truth is that eating loads of these foods wouldn't actually be the best when it comes to performance either. And it would mean that their training sessions in recovery would suffer as a result. You probably know this already, but when you exercise, you have two main sources of fuel, carbohydrates and fats. Fat stores are essentially unlimited when it comes to fuel for exercise, but carbohydrates are limited and so they have to be the focus for performance because if you run low on them, you won't be able to train properly. On top of that, as exercise intensity increases, the amount of carbs you burn compared to fats increases too. And it would be very common to only use carbohydrates as fuel during high intensity exercise. So the fuel of choice is carbohydrates and usually in the form of simple carbohydrates. Think sports drinks and gels. This is the main reason you'll see professional triathletes having maltodextrin shakes or branded sports products like Morton Offer or eating gummy sweets like Lucy here, although they are tasty too. These provide easy to digest and absorb carbohydrates which are 
absolutely essential to fuel regular training, especially if there's any sort of high intensity training involved. So they're great pre and during session nutrition, but they're also great afterwards too. We know that muscle is more receptive to sugar after exercise, which means simpler sugars help to replenish glycogen stores at a quicker rate, meaning you're keeping your carb stores topped up. Again, absolutely essential for consistent training. So in a nutshell, in order to train over the long term at high volumes, you absolutely need to have simple forms of carbohydrates, aka sugar, to fuel the training and recover properly. And there's basically no two ways about it. In this way, you can think of sports products or even sugar sweets as fuel and it doesn't have to be anything more complicated than that. They've got an engine and it needs fuel and simple sugar is the fuel of choice. Your working muscles need it and love it and it's no bad thing. But linking this back to the main topic of this video, is this actually healthy? There's two ways to think about this and that's in the short and the long term. The short term is that yeah, on balance, I would say it's healthy. As a professional triathlete who has a high training volume, you basically have two options. You either fuel your training properly, which by necessity will mean consuming a large amount of simple sugars, or you underfuel your training. If you underfuel your training, you can get various health issues, most easily described under the bracket of red S, or relative energy deficiency in sport. Something we're now coming to realize is way too common and actually, disastrous for health. We clearly want to avoid this and so we need to fuel training properly. Now, what about the long-term effects on health? Sure, professionals might be covering their day-to-day -day calorie needs and that in itself is healthy, but are there long-term effects to consuming this much sugar, training this much? When we look at what evidence we do have available, you generally find that endurance athletes are some of the healthiest people including later on in life. They have lower risks of most diseases, which is in keeping with what we know about exercise and how it helps to counteract various disease processes. But in my mind, there are a couple of things to consider still. First up is whether professional triathletes are getting enough vitamins and minerals and I suspect that they are. Despite pros having a large amount of sugary foods, most will still eat a good amount of fruits, vegetables, whole grain carbohydrates, fats, and protein. It's possible to get all the micronutrients you require from a relatively small amount of calories because micronutrients aren't calorific. So I don't think this is that much of an issue, with the caveat that the diet has to be of good quality and properly managed otherwise. So this includes consideration of dietary needs, especially those who are vegetarian or vegan. Second up is oral health. Now, dental caries or tooth decay has a clear link with carbohydrate intake, and it seems to be more prevalent in endurance athletes with higher training volumes. Acidic drinks like some sports drinks, as well as things like mouth drying from intensive training, also contribute to worsened oral hygiene. Now, I think this probably depends on your opinion about dental health as a whole, but in general, current expert consensus suggests more needs to be done for elite athletes and oral health. The the other big thing is diabetic risk and everything around that, so insulin sensitivity and resistance. You sometimes hear stories about ex-professional athletes developing type 2 diabetes and commonly see the suggestion that it's due to their sugar consumption when they were younger. Because they consumed so much sugar, their pancreas overworked, their insulin sensitivity declined, whatever the reason that's touted. But actually, there's not really much in the way of evidence to support the development of type 2 diabetes in endurance athletes, so currently this doesn't seem to be a concern. Part of this may be to do with the positive changes that come with exercise in relation to insulin sensitivity and glucose uptake into cells. Generally, you find that exercise in its various forms makes you more sensitive to insulin and also better able to move glucose into cells. So there's actually not a negative effect on your body from consuming more sugar. You effectively aren't producing more insulin than a regular person and instead you're just more efficient at a absorbing and using sugar. With all of that said, I'll be interested in how things pan out over the next 20 years or so. I think it's only in the last 10 years or so where we've really seen performance in triathlon dramatically increase and the volume of training these pros do is nuts. Given we have better technology, better insight into training methods, better access to nutrition products, I'm curious to see if this is just 
in excess of what we can tolerate over the long term. But that's probably a pretty good point to round things out with. As with most things at the elite end of sport, there's usually some sort of compromise. Thankfully, we're getting to the point where health is more highly regarded than it has been. But simply because of the stress that professionals put on their bodies, they are often walking the tightrope of athletic performance and health. It's always a balance and the difficulty is staying on the healthy side whilst pushing your capabilities. Now if you're interested in some more insight into professionals nutrition then I've put a couple of videos here for you that you should watch. Otherwise have an awesome day nutrition nerds and I'll catch you next time.